did the greenhouse. Um, we've tried hoop houses before, and the wind and the snow has killed them. So I've seen one that was a, a lean-to that worked really well because they had this kind of this wood lathe on top that would hold the plastic together. And so this is this is the door, and I have it set so that the top is separate from the bottom, so that if I want to keep chickens and children out, I can open the top and let it breathe. So. Um, instead of having just one door, because I don't have any other vents in yet. Sorry, I filled it for short people. Um, this is the inside, so it's a raised bed, and I pushed it up against this wall, because what I'm going to do is take netting, like chicken wire, and run it all the way up to the ceiling and down to the cross beam so that I can train peas onto it, peas and beans, so that while it's early season yet, I have something planted. This, lo the, the lumber was the most expensive part, and some of it was stuff we already had, but some of it wasn't, so that was kind of expensive. And then the size, the inside, has chicken wire. Can you see it? It has chicken wire to hold the straw in, so it's layered. It's layered with straw, and then... A uh, pathway uh, compost from the chickens having dug it up for two years now. So, straw, chicken compost, rabbit manure, straw, chicken compost, straw, rabbit manure. And then here on the top I put wood ashes. And then I'm waiting for it to kind of sink down a little bit. And once it's sunk down, then this top layer, this space of 12 inches, Probably I'll only put eight inches because it's really expensive. It's going to be planting medium that is weed free. And what should happen is that the inside of the grow bed should heat up so that between now and uh, May, I've got internal heat keeping the greenhouse warm. And, um, and, and so I won't be starting tomatoes. I'll be starting things like kale and, and that kind of thing because I won't. I don't want to have to fight the cold nights, but the kale won't mind the cold nights as much as something like tomatoes. So um, after I put all that down, I watered it with the sprinkler, so that's why there's water in here, is because I had the sprinkler going for a little bit. And um, the planting medium is $89 for a cubic yard, so it's incredibly expensive. And the way that they used to do hot beds was they would take the compost that was from an old bed and use it as the planting medium on the next bed. So once I have this one started, I still have to build another one of these somewhere else so that I have enough compost in February next year to put on top here because I don't want to have to put growing medium on more than once. So You mentioned cost. Uh, any idea roughly how much the lumber? The lumber for the grow this? bed? was $55, and that's because of the 2 by 12 by 10. And that's using pallets on two walls. And that's pallets on two walls, because I wanted it to be sturdier, and I already had it. And then these brackets, this is the only thing I use for any of my building, is these brackets, because I'm a girl, and I can't really get my shoulder behind a drill very well, um, and I don't want the wood to get split, and so what I use is these brackets to hold everything. I mean, you can look at the greenhouse. And that's what I've used. Um, and it's not perfect, but for girl construction, it works really well. And then the poultry netting, it was 50 feet long, and it was $13 for the chicken netting. And I can use that, again, for the back wall when I'm creating a trellis up the top. Not all the way up the top, but it should also help a little bit in the summer with shading it. Because it gets really, really hot in our backyard and really, really, really sunny because that's a white wall behind us on the house itself. And so with, with having uh, peas or tomatoes or something climbing the top once it gets to be summer, that should help cut down because we get plenty of sunlight in this way from the walls. There will still be plenty. Because um, I've grown in a greenhouse that was much more opaque than this is because we use those IBC totes as greenhouses too, and they don't get nearly as much sun as what this will get. So we're kind of excited, and hopefully this starts breaking down soon. Um, I don't know if maybe I need to put some compost tea on it to kind of speed it up, but it's only been 36 hours, so we'll see.
Okay, I'll see if I can talk over Jumper. She's the baritone in the background. Um, I wanted to show you what is coming up. Not sure, can you see it? Anyway, I've got peas coming up right now. And I already have radishes. And this is the beginning of March. And I have peas coming up. I wish it was a little bit faster. But this is new. And you can see they've sunk. So there's that and there's that. So the, the boxes have sunk. And I have added more barnyard litter. Uh, I've, I've added another two feet since the first video. And it is still quite... Well, you can see the steam. Can you see the steam? So, the stuff underneath is pulling away. You can see it's compressing away from the screen where before it was pressing into the screen. And I have some wheat germinating, which is going to be interesting. I don't know how that'll turn out. There's more. But yeah, it's steaming, and um, until I la added this last batch, the ammonia had kind of gone away, but we've got a little ammonia again. And remember, the only thing I'm really trying to do is keep, can you see the steam? That's not from the greenhouse, that's from the hotbed. It's warm in here, it's quite warm, probably about 80 degrees. Um, so for germination, for germination, that's good. And I will probably leave the upper half of the door open today so that it can breathe because it's supposed to get up into the high 40s today. And um, anyway, I'm. it doesn't really matter if the middle is still hot. As long as there's enough heat to keep it from freezing at night, that's enough heat. So I will continue to keep putting barnyard litter on the top and I'm going to keep adding boxes around the outside. You can see I did them around the outside so they're not next to that central heat night we had temperatures down in the 20s so it froze pretty hard and it, it the snow was still on the ground until about um 10 or 11 today um yesterday i repotted my uh some of my tomatoes and i brought them out here because i wanted to see if it stayed warm enough because the hot bed no longer feels hot there's no more steam and i but i just wanted to know uh so these tomato plants were in the house yesterday, but they're in here now. And um, I planted garlic in boxes so that once the once it's safe to plant them outside, I can just pick the boxes up and go make space in the mulch and just plant them out there. Because right now I still have the chickens in the back. And they, I, I'm trying to get the fencing set up so I can put them in the pasture, but it's just not quite ready yet. And they would dig up my garlic if I if I gave them the opportunity. So, there's my peas. I don't know if you can see them. Hopefully you can see them. Um, the radishes do not like the greenhouse, but the Swiss chard and the carrots and the peas do. So that's that so far. And again, the heat inside the grow bed is now kind of benign. It's just kind of simmering a little bit, so. And this is what I did on the side, because I have a double door that I made, because I just had these frames um, given to us for firewood, and I used them to make the doors, but I don't have any venting yet, so that's how I, I just took a little, a little ring and a rubber band that goes over the latch, it's just a rubber band to hold it open, and you can see that the grass is coming up really well in here. So anyway, kind of exciting, um, it's probably about... 35 degrees outside right now, and it's about 90 in here. So I'm going to leave that open. Even though I have tomatoes in here, I need to kind of vent it out a little bit. Okay, um, I wanted to give you uh, an update on the greenhouse. And um, it's really, really windy today. And so far, the plastic has held just fine. Um, I, I kind of want to put some more uh, lathe or one by twos along the outside in a strip because it's the it's the stripping it's the furring strips that hold 
the plastic on so they're not jerking against something smaller and tearing. Um, so I'll probably do that once this wind is over, but I wanted to show you how everything is doing. I can't turn the camera back towards the greenhouse, so I have to kind of guess what you're looking at now. Let's see. So the garlic is looking good, and I've got Swiss chard and carrots, and none of the radishes made it. The radishes do not like the greenhouse. But I have lots and lots of peas up. And again, we're still having freezing temperatures at night. And the other thing is that I thought that was interesting is that I've got mushrooms in here. Uh, mushrooms growing in the straw. And um, Territorial Gardens actually has some spawn that we're looking at, um, some mushroom spawn. And I don't remember if it's oyster, um, oyster mushrooms or white button or something. They're, they're kind of a generic mushroom, but I have so much uh, straw on my property and they say you just take the spawn and mix it with clean straw and put it like around the base of your raspberry bushes or something somewhere that they'll be safe and that, that it'll spread from there. So I thought we might try that and I, yeah I've got mushrooms, do you, do you, can you see the mushrooms? I got mushrooms in here all over the place. There for a while it smelled like, it smelled like um, dog poop and that was when the mushrooms were spawning and when they first started to pop up and there's the sunshine um, but I obviously you can't eat these mushrooms but um, it just got me thinking that if I could do it in my hotbed I bet I could do it with my with some spawn so anyway uh, there's our peas they're getting big and, and they're perfectly happy and the heat from the heat bed from the hotbed has died down considerably and so now it's just a greenhouse and um, but the plants seem really happy so there we go okay so here is an update for the greenhouse everything is doing really well the garlic is up really high and I know you plant garlic in the fall but I had all that garlic in my house that was um, sprouting and I didn't need it all so I decided to plant it out in the greenhouse um, as you can see, the peas are doing really well. Um, we have some uh, Swiss chard and some carrots coming up in these boxes. As you can see, I'm going to come out and I'm going to put some Swiss chard in with the garlic that I don't have anything planted in so that I'm not wasting space. And then I put some strawberries in here. I wanted to see how they would do just directly in the straw. And then some of them I did in boxes so that I can move them later and go dig a hole and just put the box in. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is this. Um, my cat had been coming in. Okay, so if you have a garden, you know that cats like to go to the bathroom in your garden. Um, and as far as I understand, cats are actually more toxic than any, you know, a lot of the parasites that pigs can get. Um, they actually get them from cats, so you don't really want cats pooping in your garden. And my cats thought it was fun because I go in there, they want to go in there, and they want to go in there, and they decide that's what they want to do with it is they want to poop in it. So I just took some chicken, not chicken, bird netting, because if I had used metal here, it would have torn holes in my plastic. And I just used a little staple gun. I can't see this because it's really bright, so hopefully you can see that. I used a staple gun along the top and one side. And then I just loop it like that and right there and there we go my cats cannot get in and I can still oh and by the way we had six inches of snow between the last two days it's been great so hopefully I can get in here to show you my venting system I put it at the bottom because I wanted cool air to come in. If I put it at the top, I would have had warm air coming in. So at the bottom, cool air is coming in and hopefully will help cool the greenhouse. And again, bird netting to keep chickens and cats out. And all I did was use, I used cardboard because um, I wanted to make sure that I could still keep it from being drafty. And this, anyway, I love these swivel things. I use them on everything. I'm such a retard. Um, anyway, that's what I did. Again, it's not, it's not rocket science. 
and the roof held with <laughs> lots and lot all that there was on that so apparently my boards are spaced closely enough together and the plastic is holding it just fine another interesting tidbit this is a loop where I have some water on the inside that uh, condensed and, and so this is internal. And what ended up happening was I had a whole bunch of little gnats and bugs in there from the manure. So they were manure flies when I did the hotbed the first time. Well once this started to congeal in here, I don't know if you can see that, those are all flies. All the flies went to the water to get a drink and fell in and died. And so I actually don't have any bugs in my greenhouse anymore because I, I was tempted to poke a pinhole here and let it drain out. But then I thought, why would I do that? I have a bug catchment system in my greenhouse. So I left it there and everything is doing really well. We have had 40 mile an hour winds and none of the plastic has been stressed and we've had heavy snows and it hasn't collapsed. So I'm really happy with it so far. Okay, so if any of you wondered why in the world I was planting everything in boxes, it's because I wanted to be able to move them. Uh, the cardboard will degrade, so I can just take these boxes and I can go dig a hole and just put the box in, and I, I won't have disturbed any of the roots. None of the roots will have been disturbed. I could put them in a cold frame, but either way, I can move them. So I have taken them off the top of the grow bed, hot bed, and it's cooler down on the floor um, they won't get as much sunshine but um, they're not high need high sunshine needing plants anyway and here in a little bit once I have my cold frame ready I can just go put them out in the cold frame in the boxes and I can still water them where they are and the cardboard retains water much better than a little plastic grow container will so this is my Oregon spring and my Thessalonica tomatoes I am going to plant them in the hotbed and then I'm going to put jars around them so they won't freeze. And then on top of that, at night, I'm going to put on a blanket. And I'm going to see if they'll make it because it is so stinking hot out here. It must be 95 degrees in here. And I made another vent right there, and it still is not moving the air like I want it to. So I might actually go get a little fan and put it in here. Um, if it was anywhere else on the property, it probably wouldn't be so bad. But in our backyard, it gets so hot. Um... Anyway, so isn't that awesome? They're biodegradable planting trays, except I don't really like this thin ones because they don't hold the dirt in well enough uh, and it makes it hard to water them. So I much, much, much prefer the deeper boxes. And I'm only having to water them about every three days. Even with the heat in here, they're holding the water really well. I brought in my starts from inside the kitchen and I'm going to go get some wire loops that I use for my cold frame tunnels and I'm going to put the wire loops over them and then I'm going to drape them with the blanket tonight and they should be just fine even though I haven't um, hardened them off at all. It is so stinking hot out here. I think I'm going to die. Um, hopefully they don't die. I guess that's the important part. Don't die little plants. Um, but I mean even the peas look just fine. They don't look like they're stressed by the heat and it is like 20 degrees colder down here at the base so that's good. That's working. And I think that's it for now. So anybody who has ever raised chicks know that after a little while they start to stink. So I had a really good idea. I'm going to bring the chicks out. They, Because they've been under the wood burning stove, they're accustomed to heat fluctuations rather than constant temperature that you get from a heat lamp. So I'm going to bring them out here. In my greenhouse, it won't be as hot at the bottom as it is at the top, but there will be pockets that are warmer than others, like in the direct sunshine. So they've got their food and their water out here. The cats can't get in because I have the netting. And I think at night I am going to bring out a heat lamp for them so that I don't have to have them in the kitchen. And the heat lamp will not only keep the chicks warm, it will keep the plants from freezing. So I can probably at that point... Um, have my tomato plants out here so I thought that was a great way to kind of dual purpose things and they can sit out here and eat the grass don't they look happy so excited I'm just gonna have to be really careful when I walk around in here because they kind of blend into everything um, I thought about putting them up here in this bed and um, I don't think I need to though I there's no way for them to get out there's no way for anything to get in and they should be really happy out here because I don't want them in the house anymore. It's why I have my hens adopt chicks is because I don't like to raise chicks.
also, it is probably about 50 in here right now. I think I'm going to lower the heat lamp down just a tiny bit. It was quite cold last night. And we didn't lose any babies. And of course, they've already got their water all gunky. Need to change that as soon as I'm not holding a camera. So I barred it off so they couldn't get to the plants that are succulent. Like the tomatoes, probably don't really care so much. Everything else back here, I don't want to get eaten by chicks. So I, so I just block things off so they can't get back there. And I have little pieces of bread in here for them to eat. And they actually did a pretty good job cleaning it up. So there is our chick greenhouse. I don't know that I would do this if they were teeny tiny, tiny chicks. But like I said, they'd been in our house for a couple weeks. And be in our house, it's cool in the morning because we have the wood burning stove that kind of slows down and we haven't got up to recharge it. So they're used to temperatures that fluctuate. So if they'd been brand new babies, I probably wouldn't have put them out here quite yet, but they're not, and they're starting to feather out just a tiny bit, so. Um, the temperature outside is probably just hovering right around 30 degrees. So the only thing they have between them and 30 degrees is, and you see they're not huddling under the light. They're kind of moving back and forth. And when I got in here, they weren't all under the light. They were just kind of moving around. And you can see the snow. 